Hi man, John Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. This is probably the first episode where I'm doing something on the uh, new mat or really the old mat that's been resurfaced. And you can see I've managed to kind of get it dull a little bit, slightly duller than before. So before I take the lid off, this is a wireless radio controlled clock and it has stopped working. But I think it stopped working because the battery bay is full of crust. So it's a good point before I... <laughs> just crack on and take the lid off is actually just to get the crusty batteries out with their crusty battery juice and you can see there all of the crust so if you're doing this at home what you can do is get a little bit of vinegar and drip it among all that and that normally gets rid of all those things it could be in a radio or a battery bay somewhere wherever the vinegar tends to work I don't have any vinegar sitting next to me so I'm going to use what have I got here I've got some label remover, which um, no, might work. And I've got some Flux Clean. So that's PCB cleaner, so good enough for this job. They're not, it's not particularly scuzzy and cruddy, but I just, I just want to kind of get the flakes off. Because I don't like it when there's those sort of weird flakes of stuff. And you're kind of like, what is that? Why are those weird flakes going on? So I've had this clock for ages and it's uh, basically a radio controlled clock and it used to be in my office and then I think eventually moved it to the bedroom. It's a bedroom clock and it's because it's nice. You don't have to set the time on it. It will just get it through the magic antennas, which I suppose don't really have as much a place in the world anymore because now it's all internet, isn't it? The internet clocks. But the internet clock things do tend to fail because I have a dab radio one of those roberts radios that has all wi-fi and all of that stuff and to be honest half the time it's got the wrong time on it because it can't connect to the wi-fi and it's generally doing what most internet enabled gadgets do and that's sort of just wet the bed after a while just stop working properly so i'm kind of like disappointed in that so i really do like older technology it just seems to work i know with clocks you get a way older technology and just set the time manually which you can do on these two I like the idea of these, you know, radio transmitted atomic clock signals that will sort of still be going on forever and ever. And then remember, there used to be one in Japan. I think there was one in Europe somewhere. Oh, my life. I can't believe it. Look, I read there's a wire loose. A wire has just fallen off. Wow, I think that's why it doesn't work. Because there's the battery crusts on here, and that's where that wire was connected. Insano Mundo. I'll have to retrieve the dirty rag from the bin and just give a bit of mopping in there. That's gross. Wow, that's a really good reason to check out your battery corrosion, isn't it? I've never seen the corrosion extend to the inside of something before. Ooh, 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 ooh. Gross. And turn on the old soldier nine as well in the corner. So let's see. Look, this is quite fascinating, isn't it? Because look, let's see if I'm going to put this in a sensible way. There we go. So you've got the buttons on the back here connected by this almost ribbon cable. Yeah, it is still, it's technically a ribbon cable, but it almost isn't. And then you've got the battery contacts here. But interestingly enough, let's see what this one goes to, this black wire. It goes, actually it does say buzzer. I think that's a buzzer wire. So that's probably no loss. That's not a battery wire, that's a buzzer wire. So it says VDD1 V5, ground VDD. Oh yeah, so it does have two taps off the batteries. You see there's two red wires, one coming off the, what would be three volts, and one coming off the one and a half. I'm suspecting maybe the clock portion is a lower voltage or something. But then look at this crazy thing. So it's got this going on to there, and then there's an antenna, and it's all like hot glued in. That is fascinating. So we're gonna go, go deep on this. And before we do though, the soldering iron in the corner here is probably just about warm enough. We're gonna solder on that piezo buzzer by heating that blob. And there's a little capacitor on that. I've seen that on a piece. I wonder what that does. It just changes the nature of the, the tone, I suspect. And it's hard. It's hard to solder it because there's such a big bloody heat sink. Nope, doesn't want to solder. It's not happening. There we go. I suspect that's why it fell off. <laughs> it wasn't really soldered on properly. Right, look at this now. Let's study it. Should we start with the main board? Yes, we will. 
So the main board is where I suspect most of the action occurs because you can see this little edge along here on the other side will be a, a connector connecting to the LCD screen above it. So that's the LCD screen. These are the inputs from the buttons that are on the side. And is there any interesting marking there? Not really. In fact, there's not particularly any interesting marking. However, it does say here, R6 short DCF, R5 short WWVB, R4 short MSF, it looks like, R3 short JJY4060. So are that, yeah, those are obviously sold jumpers, but do they refer to different sort of signals that you can have? And I'm looking here. You've got R3, R4, R5, R6, and we have R4 four is shorted here, which looks like it's MSF. It's not quite that clear on the silk screen, but it looks like it's MSF. So I'm wondering if these refer to the sort of standard of the uh, wireless receiver standards. And, and this is the, the connector here that goes to that. You've got ground, VDD, PON, and TCO. So PON, hmm, TCO. And then you see 40K. So maybe 40K is a different type of um, wireless receiver there. We'll go and have a look then. And that goes up to this module, which clearly you can see the case has these stubs for a PCB to actually screw into, but this is obviously not a little PCB module. It's, well, it's not a, a PCB to fit that. It's just a sort of standalone module. Let's unspludge that. Is there any markings on the back? Nothing on the back. It says RCC D1. That's what I can read in the corner there. RCC D1. It's got just a uh, funny looking, looks like a cap there, but obviously of particular nature because it's, it's in line with the antenna. Is it acting as a sort of Balin, electrolytic, a crystal and its own chip? So it's obviously producing its own signal. So it could be producing a, a kind of a, a bit stream that's being broadcast to the module. And then, of course, there's just a little uh, AM style uh, antenna, just wrap wire wrap around a ferrite. So it's all very fascinating, isn't it? So I'm going to pop the old batteries in. Let's hope that's worked now. I don't really want to do anything. But the screen, I'll tell you what the, the sort of symptom was on this, was that the screen got mega dim. And uh, obviously that's pretty useless in a clock to have a mega dim screen. Come on, winter's setting in now. You know winter's setting in when you can't get the batteries in. Ooh, good sign. Well, that looks okay, doesn't it? And you can see it's hunting for signal there. And if I tilt the screen at an angle, I can just read here something called DST. So I don't know if DST is another word, another symbol for that antenna thing. And there's PMCE as well. So probably different standards it could bring up. So hopefully that was interesting to you to see under the hood of a radio clock and of course, see one that was made so interestingly out of loads of discrete components. Have you had a look under one of your radio clocks and is it made in a sort of combined clever way or is it just bits and bobs like this thrown together in a box? Let me know down below and as ever thank you for watching. Just before I sign off I just want to show you something. I've got a, an oscilloscope connected to the TCO pin and I'd like to show you what I can see on the scope. You can see there is a digital signal and it does look like some sort of rather slow serial. As luck would have it, we are seeing time. And that's something you can't say you do every day. Bye bye.